stand and worship together.
welcome to worship. We're so glad you're here. We thought uh, with time change, maybe we needed a little slow start, right? So we're ready. We are poised to be in God's presence and glad to share this time together. So let's continue to worship and maybe wake ourselves up a bit. Ready? Let's go. Hi! <laughs> into fully this season of Lent and we gather around this message of the cross. Uh, we hope that that's a message of grace and peace and love and hope for all of us. And so we're gathered around that very literally this morning, gathered around the cross. So welcome. We're so glad you're here. We're glad you're on Facebook this morning. Let's everybody say good morning to those on Facebook. Please do comment and let us know you're here Share your prayers and requests with us as well. So again, so glad that you are here. If this is a new space for you, you are so welcome. We hope you'll get questions answered, uh, and we want to make this an opportunity for you to really fully worship and be a part of this time together. So again, thank you for being here, and uh, let's continue to worship. We'll uh, sing our next song. I will lift my hands and open my heart to receive your gift of
indeed. Gift of grace. You can be seated. We're so glad you're here this morning. And um, as we kind of come around God's word this morning and uh, spend some time talking about the cross, um, I want to invite our youngest forward for a moment. I got to grab this. Come on up. I wanted to show you something. Good morning. How's it going? Good. You guys good? It's hard to change time, isn't it? Whew. Was getting up early this morning a little harder? You did not get up early, so it wasn't hard. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Well, I want to show you something. This is a very special thing to me. What, what is this, first of all? A cross, right? That's what you're going to say. Yeah. So I got this in a very special place. I got this in Jerusalem where Jesus was born and lived and died, and I got to go there a couple times, and I got this to remember Jesus by. So when you see a cross, what do you think about? What do you think of? Yeah. Think of Jesus, right? Now, oftentimes you'll see people that might wear a cross necklace or maybe you see them around, um, around town, in your house. A lot of times we'll see crosses and maybe we won't even think about what it means. Obviously, we think about Jesus. We think about the fact that he died on the cross for us. But is Jesus still there? Is Jesus on there? What's on there? A flower. So Jesus didn't stay on the cross, right? Right? He went into a tomb, and then after three days, Jesus rose from the dead. So we don't see a cross that means that Jesus is still on it. Jesus isn't dead anymore. Now this cross is a sign of life and of how much God loves us to give us that life. The other thing I think of when I see a cross, when, when one of the um, people that were following Jesus asked him, what's the greatest commandment? Like, what are the things we're supposed to do? He said, love God and love your neighbor. And I kind of see the cross as this relationship. Love God and love your neighbor. Because it almost looks like arms reaching out, right? Right? So when we, when we remember that we're supposed to love God, this, this relationship that happens this way, right? And then we are supposed to love our neighbor because that relationship happens this way. That's what I think of when I see the cross too. I think of Jesus, certainly, and all that he did on the cross. But I think about this gift we have of loving God and loving each other. So when you see crosses around town around your house maybe even at school or the library or whatever even like sometimes you'll see a window and it can make a cross even if it's not intentional maybe you can start seeing crosses all over the place you guys see can you see if you can look for those yeah, yeah there's one right there I wonder if you like walk around the building see how many crosses you can find Maybe Jessica's already got a plan for, for New Life Kids, but maybe we could do that extra. So, so I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so glad that sometimes when I see the cross, I think about how much I love you guys, too. So can we pray? And then we'll go do New Life Kids. So repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for sending Jesus to love and live for us, and especially to die for us. Guide us as we see the cross as your symbol of love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for coming up, you guys. I think Miss Jessica has got a plan for you. So go have some fun. 
We'll see you later. Good to see you. And I'm going to put this back in the midst of us. So um, as we come to gathered around our word this morning, I was thinking about this sense of, of the cross. When we, when we started this season, the season of Lent on Ash Wednesday, Jesus invited us in that gospel to take up our cross daily and follow him. And ever since that night, I've been thinking about what that means. What that means for me in my day-to-day life. What is my cross to pick up? And what does it mean to pick that up and then walk with Jesus while I carry that cross? The cross is certainly that central image that we gather around as Christians. I wear a cross. I value the cross not just because of what God did for all of creation and humanity, but that it's a very personal word to me. That God in that moment took this symbol of torture and death and turned it into this sign of life and of love. So that central image of the cross is going to be our focus. Each week in this season of Lent, we're going to be gathered around a particular common object. Does anybody remember what it was last week? Bread. We gathered around that that image of bread, God's providing. So I'm hoping that this past week you had that interaction with bread uh, and uh, maybe even baked some bread and pulled it out of the oven and thought of God's mighty providing. So this week... I hope as I invited the kids, maybe you will do the same thing. Start seeing where you see crosses around town in your daily life because it is the central image of our faith. And our gospel this week once again invites us to consider what carrying the cross really looks like. That discipleship is not an easy thing. This is a costly venture that Jesus invites us into. And he doesn't pull any punches in this gospel. Uh, He wants to make sure we're really in it for him. So let's hear this invitation and see if we're able to answer. This is Luke chapter 14, starting at the 25th verse. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build but was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far off, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Salt is good, but if it has lost its saltiness, how can its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. They throw it away. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Another one of those ones that were like a question mark on the end of that one. Hate your family. Even life itself. Count the cost. And oh, by the way, Give up everything. I mean, it's good to know Jesus doesn't ask for a lot. (laughs) 
So uh, first, I think we should notice where we are in Luke. That always matters. We're a little further down the road, literally, in the Gospel of Luke than we've been the last couple of weeks. Luke 14, he's getting closer to Jerusalem. He's approaching that day where he walks in with palm branches and the donkey. And he waits, did you notice, until large crowds are following him in order to say this. He wants to know that people aren't just following out of curiosity or just like, I had nothing better to do today, so I might as well just follow this guy. He wants to be heard that this is not an easy thing, that this is going to be costly if you really want to follow me. Martin Luther once said that a religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing is worth nothing. Jesus, it seems, knew this. He wants us to choose to follow, knowing that it's not easy, precisely because it is difficult. And that's why it's so powerful and meaningful to pick up that cross and follow. And he talks here about counting the cost. If you go and build a tower, you're going to make sure you have the means to do it. If a king wants to wage war, that was a little more closer to home than we want today, you're going to count the cost. I, it's amazing to me how contemporary the Bible is sometimes. <laughs> In 2022, we still need to hear this notion of counting the cost. We count the cost of everything, right? Our impact on the environment. We count the cost in so many ways of war. We count the cost of gas, food, education, everything. Jesus knew maybe we needed to hear this word because this is not a bargain hunter's kind of thing, right? We all love a bargain. We all want a sale. But Jesus is not calling us to a cut rate, low cost kind of discipleship. He wants our relationship with him to, to mean something, to be of great value. And I think he knows that it's costly and requires sacrifice. Oftentimes, I think we want church to be a low-cost type of deal. We want to come on Sundays, get our fill, but don't, don't make it change anything about my life or my heart, right? Will Willimon is a bishop of the Methodist Church, former dean of the chapel at Duke University, and one day he got a call from a very angry father who said, my graduate school bound daughter is throwing it all away to go serve a mission in Haiti. And I hold you personally responsible for this. <laughs> to which Dr. Willeman kind of half jokingly responded, well, you know, I doubt she's had much training for that in the engineering department, but she has a degree from Duke. I mean, she's pretty smart. She'll get the hang of ditch digging pretty soon. The dad did not laugh. He said, you are completely irresponsible for having her encouraged her to do this. And Dr. Willeman then pointed out that they, as the well-meaning but obviously unprepared parents, were, they were the ones who did this, who started this journey. He said, you were the ones that had her baptized. You brought her to Sunday school. You introduced her to Jesus, not me. And then the father meekly replied, yes, but all we really wanted her to be was a good Presbyterian. <laughs> mm. I mean, is that really all we want for our kids? Is that all we really want for us? We just want to come on Sundays and be seen as a good moral Christian, but not let it change the rest of us. This is not a Sunday morning thing, friends. That's where it starts. That's where we get to fill up our tank, but it's, it, it's for the rest of the week, a Monday through Saturday. 
That's what discipleship is for. It's a hungering after God to the point of death, if need be. It topples our priorities. It can pit us against family and friends. It can set us against the ways of the world. This is not easy. Now, let's be clear. We don't follow, we don't do any of these things of discipleship in order to earn God's favor. Salvation and grace are free gift. All out on the table, God says, for the taking. Billy Graham said it best, that salvation is free, but discipleship costs everything we have. We choose to love because we've already been loved. Out of gratitude for all that Jesus has done, we're called to follow and and make these sacrifices and love extravagantly. Jesus knows that where there's no expectation, there's no real commitment. So he sets the bar really high. And he's at this crucial moment in his journey when he lays all these plans out there. He knows he is headed to the cross and what that will cost him and what he invites us into as we now follow that way of the cross. He's poised at this crucial point as he lays out all these hefty expectations. And I believe the church, the church as a whole, but also new life is poised at a crucial moment. As we kind of come out of COVID and regather and reestablish what it means to be the church in this day and time, what are we called to do? What, what costly ventures are we called to undertake? What does the community need from us? I think I've said before, if new life were not here, would the community know it? If Jesus wasn't in your life, what difference would that make to you personally? This is a hefty call. I know it. To not just come on Sundays and check something off our list but to let this be a springboard for the rest of our week. It's costly. It can be uncomfortable. And I guarantee that the cross will show up in times and places that you least expect. But as I said with the kids, please remember, it's an empty cross that we gather around. That gift of grace that the cross can be a reminder of. Salvation in Jesus is not this transaction. It is at its heart a covenant relationship that we're invited into. And any relationship requires loyalty and commitment and action. The one who redeems us is the one who calls us into this costly relationship. A one that says, follow me as not only a command but as a pure gift of grace. I don't think we'd really want it any other way. Amen. Let's pray. God, we're, we're so thankful for this gift of grace, but to let, it, let us not just sit back in that and, and wallow in the beauty of your gift, but to let that drive us forward so that we serve in your name, so that we love in your name, so that we see our neighbors in a different way. Lord, we know that this is not an easy thing you've called us to, and so we're so thankful that even the hard stuff of discipleship, you help us. Your spirit is with us in all ways and at all times. So we ask for your spirit to guide us as we, we venture out with you into the world and live out this faith that you've inspired. 
thank you again for that cross that leads us. Amen. Let's stand and join together in singing. Anyway, so thanks for being here, and uh, I want to share something vital to each one of us with each one of you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let's share that with one another around the room. Peace. Peace to you, Barb. Peace to you on Facebook. So glad you're here. And you can be seated once you've successfully shared all that. So glad to be together. And um, we got Love Fest going on up here. And <laughs> love it. It's good. It's good. 
So, uh, so thankful to have you a part of this place and uh, just the ways that you always continue to give is it really, I, we can't do it without you, seriously. Um, for all the financial, for all the volunteering, all of it matters. So I just, I never want to go without saying thank you. We do, however, need some helpers. Um, there are uh, times that we have folks in the booth that um, are being trained. Deb, wave your hand. Deb is being trained on our sound, yay. Um, and so it's, it's, it's easily done, you can do it. So if you would like to uh, have some training in order to help in the booth, we really need you. Uh, that's vital to how we produce worship these days. So uh, if you're able to, to do that, please let us know. Um, it really is not difficult. Uh, we'll talk you through every little piece of it. So, And there's other ways uh, to provide meals on Wednesday nights and on those first Sundays of the month. Um, those signups are right by the kitchen window, so we hope you'll uh, consider that. And come and enjoy those meals too. Wednesday nights at 5.30, we gather for a community meal, a small time of worship, and then adult and youth faith formation after that. So come on Wednesdays um, to get a little uh, you know, uplift for the middle of your week. So if you're able to come, that'd be great. I think a lot of us are wondering how and, and in what ways can we help the Ukrainian crisis. Um, and so there's many different ways. Um, but one of the ways I want to encourage you to think about is through Lutheran disaster response. They are on the ground there. They have been before the crisis. Uh, so they have relationships. They know where people have needs. Um, so if you're looking for a place to help, that would be a great place um, to check out. It's, it's a connection on this sheet as well as in the weekly email um, to, to go right to their website and donate directly to them. So um, I know there's, there are other ways and if you um, know of things that are happening in the community, uh, ways that we can support, um, just let us know and we'll, we'll start to talk about more of those. Um, we are offering another opportunity to have a discussion on the book, I'm Still Here, uh, today after worship. Kathy Michaelis and Iris Christensen will lead that in the classroom. Um, so we hope you'll come, even if you haven't read the book, maybe come and have a conversation um, because it might inspire you to read the book. It's a really good, um, difficult topic, but easy read. So we hope you'll come and join that. Boundary Waters, our uh, senior high youth are headed to the Boundary Waters Canoe Basin uh, in northern Minnesota this summer. And uh, today's the day. Uh, we've set a deadline because of the, the camp and the outfitter that we're going through. They have a deadline as well. Uh, so today is the deadline for those deposits. Um, so we hope uh, if you have kids in your life that would like to go, uh, let us know and uh, we'll save a spot for them. Um, also, Jessica is offering a youth service trip next Sunday after worship. Uh, we're going to go to the Elizabeth House and share lunch and organize a few things um, at that shelter. And so we, uh, we hope you'll be able to join us. Um, it's for middle school and high schoolers. So um, come and join us after worship next week. And after worship today, also we're going to be talking about the landscaping project. So Joe will be in the community room in the comfy couches. Right? Cool. Um, we want to make sure that this Lenten season is a season for you to go a little deeper. So there are, um, there's a wonderful lending library in the community room. The labyrinth space is in the recreation center. Thanks to Terry and Dave Beckingle for setting that up. And um, obviously, as the weather warms up, there's the outdoor labyrinth, our prayer room, this space. Just know that if you want a space to go deeper, this is it. This, it's open for you. So uh, we hope that you'll take advantage of that this season. Let's, uh, let's spend some time in prayer and uh, lift those, those concerns and joys to our Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, we are drawn in to your love and grace. And in that, let us be reminded of your call to follow in and through difficult things and easy. And you gather the whole church into this community of mercy and grace. And so we ask that you would 
unify Christians around the world in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition. Lord, protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Lord, we're not even sure how best to pray for the global situation right now. We know, however, that your spirit is there, helping where help can be found, bringing peace where that's possible, guiding decision makers to lead with love. Lord, be with the people of the Ukraine and surrounding countries to feel the outpouring of compassion from the whole world. Your spirit kindles faith that can move us into action. And so help us to see the needs in our community and be able to respond in ways that demonstrate your love. You hear us when we cry to you. So Lord, we bring these people and situations to you today. We pray for Rihanna's healing for Rich Skarsky and his healing. Pray for Margie and Tom. Vicki Teagan prays continued prayers for Miss Carolyn. Stephanie offers prayers for Jade and her healing, for her friend and grandfather battling cancer. And we pray for Amy Gallagher for her healing. Lord, all those people and situations that you bring to our minds right now, we know that your spirit carries them. So accept the prayers that we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need and for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. As we gather around this table and around this meal, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you come forward, remember all are invited and welcomed. I do have gluten-free wafers in the front. Just let me know that you need that. But come forward as you're directed. All is ready. Grand earth is quake before and move by the sound of his voice seas that are shaken and stirred can be calm broke in my regard through it all through it all
as well through it all. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's send ourselves out singing. This is the sound of the tribal traveling.